scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I won't trade anything for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. minute and say Lord cast me not away from your presence pray and say Lord may I not many of us have lost the experience of his presence you're just operating power I'm telling you your presence This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah. The presence of God, the glory of God, can make a man, it can affect even your physical body. The glory of God your physical body it can keep you young fresh this is not about money it's not about prosperity it's the glory of God the glory of God can alter you it can bring you into an atmosphere this is not just power you invoke and prime no no it's an atmosphere you live there you dwell there you speak from there you judge things from there Moses said show me your glory God said no man will see my glory and leave he said however I will let my goodness pass by you and he covered Moses' eyes and the Bible says he stepped and Moses saw eternity pass I'm very disturbed at how easily people can give up God's presence to take something that can be found when his presence is treasured. What are you looking for? Fame, money, power, charisma, ministry, anointing, intelligence. You see, I'm telling you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ We've lost the art of God's presence. That you are praying. Prayer is not the same as the presence of God. Many people think that you are praying in tongues. 
Have you not seen people who pray week after week every day? But there are certain people when they step in, it's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. In the glory, I will stand. Help me with the symbol, please. I will stand. And I will lift my hand In your glory I will receive Every miracle you have for me In your glory I will stand I will stand And I will lift my hands In your glory I will receive Every miracle You have for me I love your presence I truly love your presence more than gold more than silver oh I love your presence I love your presence I have learned the value of your presence Better than power, better than anointing, I'm telling you. Better than fame, nothing can be compared to the presence of the Lord Jesus. See, without the presence of God, you don't have a message, you don't have a ministry, you don't have an assignment. Learn this. Everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you. Stop chasing after what his presence can give you. I have learned by experience. Moses said, Lord, do not send us from here. Yes, let the people say we are marking time, but don't send us. If your presence will not go with us. He understood the value. Many of us have not been trained. The, the presence of God is not goosebumps. The presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling. And the Lord walking with them. Not answering their prayers. Walking with them. And the Lord making his habitation. Father, teach us your presence and help us to value your presence. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. Hallelujah. How many of you truly love the Lord with your life? Let me see your hands. You truly love the Lord. Some of you love the Lord, but you don't truly love Him. You love Him, but not... Years ago, the Lord asked me and said, Can you die for me? I said, No. I can face persecution for you. I can go through several things. But to die for you, no way. No way. I'm not sure I've gotten to that point. And it did something to my heart. 
I don't know what he did. I cannot explain. But I know I love him. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I truly live for you alone. Every breath that I take. And every moment I'm away. Have your way in me, Lord, I give you my heart, give you my soul, I live for you, every breath that I take. Would you have your way tonight? Have your way in me. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Take your place. Take your place. In my life, have your way in me. Have your way, Lord. I want to be under so much influence of the Holy Ghost. I want Him to possess every fiber of my being. Just like a demon spirit possesses a man and begins to demonstrate his character through that man. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost to an extent that his face began to glow as though it were that of an angel. There is such a realm, there is such a realm where a man can become like a God upon the earth. Not by usurping authority over people, climbing a mountain in the spirit, the Bible talks of men who this earth was not worthy to receive. They contended for certain things that were higher in the spirit. Always examine yourself to find out whether you are losing his presence. Don't use miracles as a sign that the presence of God is still with you. The psalmist said, cast me not away. That means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. That was a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week. I missed the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. God kept me for your sake. You shout it more than ever until you change. Hallelujah. If you don't love God, you will not love me. James 1, verse 22. James 1. Please make sure you are writing. These are some of the few things you do that makes you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. If you've been coming here for a long time, if you're coming for the first time, it's okay. Or if you're not yet born again. But if you've been coming for a long time and you don't have a, a good notebook or notepad or jotter or something. Or at least your phone, your notepad on your phone. That you can write out teachings. It tells me how much you value God. It's amazing how people give God so little of their life and time. 
yet they demand so much from him. Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives. And then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life Lord, like so, so, so person's own? And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22. Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day, I remember some years ago, I was in a relationship seminar. And they asked me, they said, is there holy kiss in the church of God? Ah. I told them, I want to be your friend. Don't ask me those questions. No. Hallelujah. At least I know that you can kiss a very small lady and a very old woman. <laughs> if you truly love the person, you can kiss a very small lady like my sweetheart. Yeah? She always receives a kiss from me. And then very old. If you really love that old woman with agape, you should have no problem kissing the old woman and say, Mommy, nah. How did we get here? <laughs> James 1. <laughs> but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and immediately forgetteth what manner of man he was. Can you imagine? But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it. Take note. He looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Now, there are lots of believers who, as they begin to walk with God, they start saying, Lord, why am I not receiving results in my life? Why is brother so-so-so or sister so-so-so receiving results? And I've been born again for a long time. I come to church, I pray, and I fast. Hallelujah. But then, I'm not seeing... The manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word. And that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say I love God. I, I've done everything I know how to do. I mean this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. You know, I read scripture, I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1 verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1 22. I'm seeing a woman outside. You're holding a child. You came with a baby. I think you wore traditionals. Please, can I have that woman? Outside. You came with a baby. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord? 
came with a baby, please, when you find that person, let her come. See a woman with a baby. Let's continue. James 1, 22. Amplified. Who is there? Can you help her with a mic, please? I like the rendition. I'm still seeing the woman, a woman with a baby, child, small child. Not really a newborn baby, like a few months. I think it may be maybe some years, a year or so. Yes. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Listen. But be doers of the word. Obey the message, okay? And not merely listeners to it. And not merely listeners to it, okay? Betraying yourselves. Betraying yourselves. Into deception. Into deception. By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their lives. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That means, in a crowd like this, there are people who can be hearers. Oh, glory. I'm hearing this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls them hearers. But then it is possible that as the word of God is coming, you are hearing. But there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the, Bob, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of the word. They don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all cost of the word. And the Bible calls that, if you are a victim of that, the Bible says you have been deceiving yourself. So it is possible for a man to deceive himself. And there are many Christians, many pastors, many members, many great men and women of God who are living in deceit, deceiving themselves. They love God, but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles. They know it. And, and you see, look up, please, look up. The most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it. Because anytime you hear someone teaching it, there is that hardness you already know. Hallelujah. You already know. But it's not working in your life. It's not producing results. That means something is wrong. He said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with a promise. He says so that thy profiting will appear unto all. So could it be that we have many believers who hear the word? mp3s all the time in their ears and not many are committed to the practice of god's word
you truly do not believe the word if you don't practice any part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe no matter how you try to convince yourself according to god's principles you have believed a thing truly if you are living by it so you see that we have many christians but few believers not many people truly believe the word hallelujah look up for those that are students when abu brought out your timetable did you believe that timetable how did you prove that you believed it when your lecture was eight o'clock were you sleeping you got up and went to class believing you didn't see the person who pasted the timetable correct but you were so convinced if you just lay down there and say oh, my timetable is out when they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it people jam pack the library that's faith in the administration so many people now say i love the lord lord i love you the urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious are you listening to me but when it comes to practicing god's word there is no urgency there is complacency and people just hope that maybe it will work it tells on the way we respond and live by the word of god so we have people tithing today not tithing tomorrow we have people loving today not loving tomorrow we have people studying the word and not studying and then you ask people why and they tell you look if you really know what is happening in my life now you even thank god that i'm still born again hallelujah and you expect people to sympathize with you and you say look see just forget to oh, it's just god that is helping me right now <laughs> can i tell you something friends listen if you bend from living by god's principles it will not be an excuse for god to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life you will suffer ruthlessly for it if everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, Tor, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers this looks very simple very very simple but this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom life because we truly do not live by the word deceiving yourselves hallelujah many believers many hearers we have all kinds of tapes different bookstores Oga oh Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it hallelujah have you seen such kind of people they can tell you when they are counseling somebody you you hear them speak ask them you can attach someone who just got born again to them and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit but they themselves will never rise beyond that level but they understand the spiritual principles you can send them on evangelism they will bring back souls they can do great motions but to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of god they will never do it that's why paul said let it not be that after i have preached i myself will be a castaway that means it is possible there are many men of god who are victims of the things they teach 
They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the word. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. See, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs? You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves there. That's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. I'll never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came, Bible said, and when evening came, that was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them you say my god look at the the unwavering audacity but then they don't believe it someone teaches on tithing and says i assure you if you don't tithe you will do this this person ask him in all sincerity you see we are not in the old testament otherwise many men of god would have been humbled by now many of us i'm not just saying them you know now God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Ba, 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 ba. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to Koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... Uh, protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. Then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, 
but in the realm of the spirit there is no deceit a lot of people say you cannot deceive god you cannot even deceive demons you see because in the realm of the spirit everything lays bare i hope you know that you can deceive men in this realm but i tell you the truth in the realm of the spirit everything lays bare ask the sons of skiva paul was doing certain things and one day the bible says they gathered come sir they carried somebody sons of skiva plenty of them and they came and they quietly locked the door they said we adjure you in the name of jesus whom paul preaches is that not the real jesus and the demon says today is today you will know that we have been watching you he said jesus i know in other words i see them in the secret we know that they are living by the principles of god's word and so we can attest see if you don't if you don't run away from god in the secret he will not disappoint you in the open he said jesus i know paul i know he said but who are you he says since you want to pretend it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake and the bible says that spirit beat all of them one stripped off their clothes two and drove them out for the whole city to see so imagine the men of god in that city naked what happened not accident not bomb blast no nothing you say a victim of uh <laughs> you just imagine miracle service and then just imagine all of us running me and bishop stand I said, let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They will first run away from that environment. And go and say, what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word, doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a rude shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible, reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10%, of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will leave. They say, make commitments. And before they said anything, you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that, you see, that's why, honestly, honestly, I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. 
And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. He will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past. Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that gave koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this Abba, Jerry Savell? I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in Joss, they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who were going to go to Jerusalem. And you know, they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create, they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to come in, just say anything, A-O-B, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land, but if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy a cigarette, for instance. But, if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, and it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye, it says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, may, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone thanks to blackberry you can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other receive things you should not receive and then facebook again these things are nice if you use them well twitter we have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people 
not to live by the principles of the word. So you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel. But still has in one secret place in his folder. Passworded. All kinds of pornographic jargons. And the problem is they will never admit they need help. You see the point? It's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say, Lord, somebody help me. But where people just laugh, and then they come out and do all kinds of things. And then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jared. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not. We need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady. Now, after the burden of standing to minister, Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Ketura. So, to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop, this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine. And in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles, in each of them, there were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians, people who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re-examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word at all costs? John Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we'll probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, I will shout, or just get some more money from building project or whatever, and just try and say, You said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came, just knocked and said, You have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says he who conceals his sin 
shall not be delivered. You are not prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. Shut up, and the lady just closed the door. <laughs> Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity in the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. It's a call. How much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said one of his sons in the ministry, he went to preach for him in Lagos. Within one year, when he started, when he saw the crowd, as a spiritual man, he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new, Bible students, don't worry, you watch the video. It's a minister's conference, won't give people around, but we will watch it. Hallelujah. Gave him a brand new car to Jeep. Most men of God, are you not surprised that with the evil happening, most of the people who should talk are not saying anything? They are just keeping quiet. Come on now. Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent. When you have dipped your hand with somebody, will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study, and I'm glad he said it, about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please, don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pock. And he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy was living in a lot of, as at the time, he was living in a lot of sexual perversion. This is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of God, they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain. See, that's why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins. You just hear one great bishop just got up. Ah, he's gay. Now you try, you, and you are now thinking. I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter in worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, are you not seeing my room number? I'm a guest here. In the night, quietly. Who know? I said, I should come and help her go and walk a guy from my room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it, I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the khakis, he said, hold on. Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, 
the blessings of God and some of the, princip the principles that a daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him. John Suleiman said, he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad that you went? He said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Annie, come. So I'm going, I'm going to where now, Mina? And I just drop. I tell them, please, book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you will even believe. Think I'm seeing every lady like trees. This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control, what happens so they have different people in different spots just sleep with that sharp sharp and then they just clap for the man comes to sit down he stands up and you see people falling under the anointing he's genuinely anointed but he has lost the presence see something woke up from sleeping with a prostitute did you read that in your bible what did he do immediately the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately he got up, removed the gate of his city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. He removed the gate and kept it on a mountain. That you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful. is not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night and God says, you owe me three years. Three years, you're a liar. You are shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. So you, sister, please, after Koinonia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, you say, you say, don't you smile, Abba. <laughs> Is that not what some of your lecturers do? They look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, they say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? <laughs> Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost you. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not, you are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. Whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit there and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help. Quick. Quick. 
I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this and that. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. But for your openness and sincerity, the Lord will bless you. But there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega. Everything about God is in them. Are you listening to me, please? So what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind to live by and practice? I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house. You are here, you are looking at me. Say, won't I go? He's the only one now. The Christian brothers are not coming. Which nonsense are you saying? Who do you want now to come? And meet this kind of unfertile soil. Who do you want to come with this kind of life? The brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny. Look at what you are living. I'll not be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest. Now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address. Just say, forget that, like, don't make the people feel guilty. What nonsense is that? You don't find that in Koinonia. By the grace of God, we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of God's power and glory and grace. Hallelujah. There are many of you that once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not. I always tell people the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. If, come Tosin. If Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. Are you listening to me? The day I leave her alone and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do. But she says, I have come to take the word of my father as my own word. I'm not doing it because of him. At that point, they are the practitioners of God's word. God bless you. There are some of you, the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you. Hallelujah. One day someone came and said, pray for me. I want to go abroad. I said, why? He said, truly, I just know that God wants me to be there. I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to go and die. Abroad? Some of you want to go abroad. <laughs> First day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost nude moving and you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah! You just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has spoiled. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe their group of friends are there. They say, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah, just turn around and saw pretty lady. Say, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. Hallelujah. There are many of us, the day you hold one million of your own, not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him, your, your own, 
that nobody knows, only you. Ha! You can book the best room in TJ Palace. You can charter a car from here and anywhere. You can take a flight, just drop in Lagos and go back. You can do anything you want to do. At that point, you find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. You say, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God or do you genuinely mean it? Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel kai? Let me come. I don't want anybody asking me any question. Did you come or not? Let me just kukuma come. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 13. John 13. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. John 13, verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you are there. One to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. He said, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. There are some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out a way you don't like. You said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know the, the Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he would teach his children, in the, he, would, he would raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you, they, ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. You love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Amazing. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending ENI meetings actively. Apparently, she had that it's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, ah, I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got these school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious about 
a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody will kiss me and take me to hell. That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. We say, everybody wake up. Wake up, family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one areas that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on, you wake him and he says, the day you enter this room again, and you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. Very excited. You are the one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time. They see you strolling around Paladin. They say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do. That's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exam for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and prize for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a result. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you just wave and say, God, I worked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? You say I will backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And people who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Yeah, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't uh, pray. Let's just know that us, we are sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he says, eh, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? You will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing. Always. You look at broke people. The day they bless your father, neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry. They just gather themselves and say, ah, ah, hey, hey rain is falling, no. Mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter. You see, all kinds of insinuative statements. Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. Once they see you going to church, they just say, ah, ah, Mother Mary, talk, pray for us. So they look like they are bold something is judging them you calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you they say i don't like my life but brothers and sisters let me tell you something those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living so ask yourself are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in one leg out you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing hallelujah have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner for instance and someone who just heard from somewhere you dress too you come and stand like them 
You say, you, what do you like? Me, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can't talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so, so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. And you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because you had been standing for long, but you were not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things. And by standing there, you were implicating yourself. Because you've already just said with someone, even say, we'll sit together. When we get the car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this. And you are just standing there and say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who name the name of... Do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble? Ask them. They'll tell you we did evangelism. Uh-huh. We did evangelism. Say, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tithing. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tithing, it doesn't come. And you are not telling people, bring buckets, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. You say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to, after committing myself to God, and then at the end, I will find out that I was only pretending and there is nothing to show forth for it. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4. Verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word that was preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look up. So they had it. But what happened? It did not produce results. See, listen, let me tell you something. That's why you can have a crowd of people like this. And we are praying and releasing blessings. And you see some people lifting their hands, but they don't even believe. They are just wondering, will it really happen? How are we even sure this man of God is genuinely anointed? You are there arguing. Somebody is opening up his spirit. Next week, the person comes with a testimony. And I say, why is it that there are some specific people? I will find out this thing. Next Sunday, I'll come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing. That's the cynical spirit that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody, but they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. When it comes to the things of the spirit, 
drop your age, your title, your reputation, your educational status, whatever, and with meekness, you receive. That's the problem with a lot of people. Some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come. They say, ah, it's just youth. Hallelujah. Remember going, going to one house to go and pray for them. They've heard about me. They've listened to the messages. And when I went there, I saw the shock on the man's face. Apparently, he thought he was his age mate coming. When I came in, he couldn't believe it. Ah. So he sat down. And then for him to talk, he was just merry-go-rounding. He was wondering. Because some of his children are older than me. You know, he was talking, hey, how have I degraded myself now? And I sat down there. And with all humility, I was pitying the man. I said, who is suffering? I was sitting peacefully at home. You didn't let my phone rest. Now I have come. This guy was suffering something. He didn't want to say it. It was a medical condition. It was me and him. He could not speak. These are things I have had for years. It's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that. A man is suffering from a particular... He just sits down and he just... Who are you deceiving? Every time William Branham wanted to minister to people, he would look at them. And say, do you take me? Do you receive me as a prophet of God? People say yes. Instantly, the vistas of their life will be opened up to him. And he'll begin to speak to them. One day, a particular man of God called me. He saw in a dream that I was ministering to him. And he called. He had been struggling with certain things, real challenges in his life. And when he called, he said, well, God showed me this thing. Eh, and I wanted us to rob minds together. I told him, keep your pride. I'm not going to pick a call and rob mine. You need, you need deliverance. And this is what God has sent for you to be done. If you are ready, come. Don't sit down there and say, we are not robbing minds. Many of you will never admit. See, it, this is not bragging. This is not bragging. This could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings. You see the protocol people stand and say, Abba, Sonny. How about you are looking at me? Okay, Sonny, we entered car together with you. You don't know difference. My parents suffered for years. I was still anointed and liberating many families. For years, it grieved my spirit. Did you know that in all my years of ministry, I've only ministered in my state. Aside from crusades we organized, I've only ministered once in my own state. There are few places in this country I've not gone to, but in my own state, only once. You see that? This can be reasons why people don't receive. From the day, see, this is not human worship. By the grace of God, we respect. It's childishness. If an elderly person, someone older than you can give birth to you, is respecting your grace, and you are now bragging, you are a child. There is not demonic possession. The, the remedy is just to grow up. But let me tell you something. You must open up your heart and receive. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving something? This could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed. Every time you are receiving the word, you are just looking and saying, oh yeah, yeah, again. And you are remaining where you are. The anointing reacts to honor, brother. When God has put a man over your life, he's not your friend. He's not your colleague. It is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you. Read a particular book. Pray. Throughout this week, go and you just laugh. See, your adherence to instructions 
He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight, I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves. Because in the end, you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cross that the cross might be found in you. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe this word. We're going to pray in the next five minutes. Listen, and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God. But you're going to tell him, Lord, I'm making up my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear the prayer point first. I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are not, a you are not an unjust God, truly, have not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious in this aspect. Some of us is in the aspect of character. You can pray, you can fast, but character. You've never sat down to work on it. It's not an issue. Hallelujah. Some of us is love. Some of us is the spirit of excellence. We keep saying these things. You're not going to hear anything new. These are the principles that have made great people. But let me tell you something. Listen. There must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace, but you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today and attack some things out of your life. Pornography, immorality, hallelujah, falsehood, every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I Listen, see, look up. It's not difficult. Just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say, I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I am taught with childlike faith, I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, he would say, I know, I know. I would say, okay, drive it, and I would turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to doom. There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. 
I know, I know everything. I know pray. I know, I know this. I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people, great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire, and I see the dimensions they are operating in, I feel like a child and a toddler. And I maintain that posture of humility, accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know. And I humble myself and take it. There are many of us, the last time you made progress in your life was years ago because everything you know. You are sinking. They are saying, give me your hand. You say, I know. Are you joking? I can swim. You are dying. Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know. They are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry. We have things under control. Run away from that demonic attitude. We're going to pray. Rise up on your feet. I hope someone receives something tonight. This message is preparing us for the miracle service. In the next five minutes, listen. In the next five minutes, I like us to, if you want to lie down, you want to cry, instrumentalist, I want you to really play. We are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say, Lord, I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect. There's no demon stopping my progress. I'm the one. I must admit it. And you're going to pray. Lift your voice. Please don't look at anybody inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, cry unto him. Say, Lord, I know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity, that would have brought me grace, that would have brought me increase. I've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles. Lift your voice and pray. Don't deceive yourself again. The Bible says, be ye to us. Be ye to us. There are issues in your life you've been afraid of confronting. What you don't confront, you don't conquer. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I've not been praying for weeks. I've not been praying for months. I look like I'm a prayer warrior, but I've been deceiving myself. I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principles no matter what it will cost you no matter what it will cost you abarata kata prakata balada ba rakata baka sataya mam prateka reko sapa rabaka preska peria da balada ba rapa prosko preska pati alaba we are praying inside and outside just 5 minutes Hallelujah. Listen. You know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual, and continuous state of working in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something. If you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually. For you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. We're rounding up. Make sure you are praying. 
Help me. Help me. Help me. I want to practice every truth that I know. That's the only evidence that you believe it. Challenge yourself tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Say I will practice every truth I know. Whatever truth I hear, I believe it. I receive it. I walk in the truth. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel condemned. You may be convicted, but don't feel condemned. God is always a faithful God. And he's willing to help you. One more minute, we're rounding up. Rakata go soto pakata. Le pros ke pariketa. Pranto pres ke le boshataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one quick prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace to live and walk in the truth of God's word. No matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit. Until it becomes a habit. Whether it's tithing, whether it's speaking the word, whether it's your study of God's word, studying books that will develop you. You know these principles. Get the tapes, get the teachings. Share them again. Practice them. Lift your voice and cry for grace. Lord, release grace upon us. Grace, unwavering committer to walk by your principles. No matter what happens, you are faithful. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should repent. We can take you by your word. You are trustworthy. You are reliable. We need not trust any other thing. Hallelujah. Look up. Look up. See, many of you need to go back home and go and talk to some of your loved ones. All those, all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do that they bring whatever prophet to your house. You know that those things are wrong. You must not walk in rebellion. It's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your committer. The things you used to do. You can't do it again and say you are the same. Don't just say I'm the righteousness of God. No! Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even if Satan accesses a life, access was given to him. You will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This message as simple as it is this night I pray that it will ring in your spirit. I pray that you will not just be emotional about it take action some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice but I'm really sorry we cannot continue again we are not going the same place what if they say I'm bad that's the problem you can't find yourself everywhere doing everything and say you are going somewhere. No. No. Great people don't behave like that. You've got to be different. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you misunderstanding. You focus. With time when your light shines, everyone will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's any sister here that you are around any guy who is sleeping around and doing every, whether he's a pastor, pope, bishop, leave him this night. Send him a text message and tell him, Pastor, I respect the grace of God upon your life, but I'm really sorry. I'm ready to be serious with God. Or brother or whatever. Make up your mind to live by the word of God. Make up your mind. This is in preparation for the mighty things God is going to be doing on Friday. You must be ready to do it, to be a doer. Many of us, God stopped giving us instructions a long time ago because if he tells you, you don't even do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, as a family, we pray. We want to be authentic Christians. We want to be genuine. 
and Lord we are asking you to help us in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that genuine honest committal for God his ways for obedience practicing principles that cut across every sphere of our lives our spiritual lives our finances the anointing excellence whatever principle help us remove a heart of stone oh God and give us a heart of flesh tonight let the spirits of men stop struggling with you in the name of Jesus Christ and whoever is under the sound of my voice who has become a prey to Satan as a result of negligence I set you free tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I silence the voice of the accuser over your life I declare and I say Satan the Lord rebuke you the blood speaks mercy which is higher than judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that God would destroy any appetite for disobedience to his word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I separate you from godless associations I pray for grace that as you go back home what needs to be destroyed will be destroyed what needs to be deleted will be deleted in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please remain standing you're here inside and outside you've not made a decision for Jesus you've never given your heart to the Lord this is the beginning the Bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest we're a family of faith it's always our joy to welcome those who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ this is where it all starts from or those who have given their hearts to the Lord, but for some reasons you found yourself derailing. We are welcoming you home. Inside and outside right now, please leave your seat and run out here. As the Lord speaks to you, don't sit back. Be sincere. We've spoken about sincerity. You're about giving your heart to Jesus or you are making a fresh commitment. Don't sit back there. God bless you. God bless you. Inside and outside. Sisters, I see you. Keep coming. God bless you, everyone, brother, sister. God bless you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. It takes boldness. Don't sit back there. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, even if you came with your friend, leave the person and come. It's an opportunity for you to have a fresh start. A fresh start. A fresh start. A few more seconds and we'll wait for you. A few more seconds and we'll wait for you. A fresh start with destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Listen, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I'd like you to lift your right hands to heaven, all of you in front here, and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for me. In the name of Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. From today, I'm a transformed person. My name is in the book of life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I denounce sin and Satan. I walk in righteousness and true holiness. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you preserve these ones. Let Satan not have a say over their lives again. We launch them into lives of victory and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Look at me. You just follow the ushers and they will give you the relevant directions. Please appreciate them, everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, inside and outside, we have a prayer and a blessing for you. If this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia, please leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly, we want to pray for you. Quickly, inside and outside. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Yes, come. Come. Inside and outside. Thank you for coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come on, this is the doing of the Lord. For those of you who invited them, may God bless you. May God lift you and cause his face to shine upon you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah.
praise God. This is Koinonia. Thank you for coming tonight. Were you blessed? Hallelujah. Want to pray for you. You will never be the same again. I assure you. You will live with the presence of God. You will become a transformed person by the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to bless you and release a prophetic word over your life. And I assure you, you will see results in your life. Saints of God, stretch your hands towards them and bless them. Prophesy over their lives. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever limitation they came here with leaves them forever. We thank you. They will begin to see transformation in their lives. Whatever sickness you came here with, I command that it goes. Whatever oppression, it goes. In the name of Jesus, may your life begin to experience an undeniable transformation. May everyone around you see the outworkings of the Spirit in your life. May they know you came for Koinonia and that you met the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray that the Lord will grant you whatever your heart's desires are. In Jesus' name, thank you so much for coming. We'd love to see you again and again. Please follow the ushers, the path, the details, and then you come back. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, let's listen to the following announcements, and then we'll be out. God bless you. Hallelujah. Next week is our miracle service. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please sow a seed of inviting others. You know people who really need to be healed. You know families that are suffering and are oppressed. Please and please let this be an opportunity. Come early if you invite people, especially for those who are coming outside of Zaria. Bring them on time so that at least even if it is outside, they can get a seat. Hallelujah. Time is 5.30. Our miracle services are not 6. Please take note. 5.30 on the dot we are starting. So you can leave your, um, your destination on time. Hallelujah. Please be a part of our bus project. Free bus transportation is available at the close of the meeting. All those going to Congo, Please converge at the projector stand outside. Donuts and Zobo are available for sale by the welfare department. Hallelujah. You can patronize them and then Jordan Bookstore is there with books. Please, you can pick some books for your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to pray. Please make sure for the miracle service, you come with your prayer requests. Write your prayer requests. Receive that of your family members. Media those who are sending online, please, they should send before Friday so that if it's possible to print it, we'll have it here and we'll pray. Hallelujah. It's going to be a powerful time. I'd like you to come expectant. Hallelujah. All leaders, don't forget we're fasting on Thursday, preparing for the miracle service. Hallelujah. Please rise up as we round up. Lift your hands and let me just pray for you. Father, this week, I pray that you will do mighty things in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace for uncommon obedience. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Grace to be a genuine practitioner of God's word. At all costs, receive it in the name of Jesus. Grace to conquer anything that has become a mountain and a challenge over your life. I speak it over your life. You are distinguished. Go and prosper. Go and multiply. Go and increase. I call you the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I bless you. You are separated from death and accident and the activities of wicked and unreasonable people. None of you will be a victim of, of assassins or wicked people. I put the seal of the blood upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call your family members blessed. Every closed door, I swing it wide open. In the name of Jesus Christ, for those of you still writing exams, I pray that you will experience the hand of God. Those of you traveling, your journey is blessed. Everyone in your vehicle is blessed for your sake. Fear not, for you will not die. You have no covenant with death. I rebuke sickness from your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. After the grace, I'd like you to hug 10 people and tell them you have the grace to live by the word. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. 
Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.